Welcome back. Should we take a look at the ACR Pro 75 from Akko? This is the Akko ACR Pro 75, a keyboard that Akko themselves call one of their intermediate keyboards. In this video, we're going to do a few builds of the Akko ACR Pro 75. The first is going to be as it comes out of the box with the polycarbonate plate installed. In the second, we'll switch to the aluminium plate and make no other changes. Then based on the first two builds and my preferences, I'll do my third and final build. The DIY kit that I have here retails at $100 on the Akko website, $99.99, but I'll round up to, those, um, to the cents on these prices. And then the the fully assembled keyboard is $120. And before we start, I want to thank Ryan from Akko for sending this keyboard and the switches that I'll use in this video. They actually sent me a couple of keyboards, some switches and some keycaps, so thanks very much for that. And if you check out the description below, you'll see affiliate links to Akko, hopefully if I get it in place in time for this video release. And also in the description below, you'll see my other affiliate links and you should, by the time this video gets released, see the link to my Etsy shop, which is where I'll sell some of my modded and sort of the keyboards that I build and mod basically. So let's have a quick rundown on the specifications. The ACR Pro 75 is obviously a 75% keyboard, that's 81 keys. It has a really solid acrylic case and a gasket mount system. In the DIY kit that I've got here, you get both the polycarbonate and aluminium plates, but in the pre-assembled version, you get only the polycarbonate plate. This version, which is the black version, has a wired only hot swappable south facing RGB PCB. So that means no wireless connectivity. There is a pour on plate foam pad, there's a silicone switch pad, and there's an EVA foam case pad. It comes with Akko plate mount stabilizers but the PCB is compatible with screw-in stabilizers and the keyboard is programmable with Akko cloud driver. So you will have seen during the unboxing at the start that you get everything in the box that you require in terms of tools to strip and mod this keyboard and you obviously get the USB-C cable to use it but there are a few other items that are kind of unique to this keyboard that I'd like to elaborate on. So the first thing is the stick on feet. I did look at them but I didn't really pay too much attention to them um, because they didn't look very nice to me. They didn't look like they would finish off the aesthetic of the keyboard very well, so I kind of left them out. But to be fair, the keyboard does look relatively flat to the desk, so I can understand why they've included those feet. But I don't know if it was kind of an afterthought, if they built the keyboard and thought crumbs this is flat, or they decided to do this before they started designing the keyboard. But it's good to have them there if you do feel you want to put them on. And then the second thing is the spare gaskets. So you get four spare full gaskets. So the keyboard comes with full gaskets pre-installed, which I'll show you later on. Then you get a full set of silicone socks, which are just like a shorter set of gaskets, which should make the keyboard feel softer, I assume anyway. One point to note, which may be important for you guys, depending on which keyboard you're gonna go for, is that the black version comes with a south facing RGB PCB, while the white version comes with a north facing PCB. So basically for the people relatively new to the hobby out there, north facing PCBs means North facing switches means that they aren't going to be compatible with cherry switches. You'll get some interference on some of the rows. Whereas a south facing PCB means south facing switches and you won't get interference with cherry keycaps. So it just broadens your kind of possibilities in terms of what keycaps you can go for. So first off, we're just going to do an out of the box build. What that means is I'm not going to do anything to the keyboard or the setup of the keyboard. I'm just going to install switches and keycaps and see how it works. Yeah, out of the box as it as it basically comes to you pre-assembled. Before I did this, I just wanted to check the gaskets setup. Some keyboards come assembled with gaskets already installed, some of them come with some of the gaskets already installed, so I just wanted to check what the setup was on this one before I started. To check this I just needed to unscrew the 13 case screws and lift off the top frame so as I could basically see the gasket system, and from here I could see that a full set of the full length gaskets were already installed, which is fine, that's where I would have started anyway, so we'll run with that and we'll put together our first configuration. To keep it consistent throughout, I've already lubed the Akko CS Jelly Black switches. I couldn't 
didn't see any lube on the switches, so they must be the non-pre-lubed version. With the CS Jelly Black switches, a box of non-pre-lubed switches, which is 45 in a box, will run you $12. But you can also get them pre-lubed at $17 for a box of 45 switches. Then I've gone for a set of Akko SAL Double Shot ABS keycaps, which means that this is a full Akko build. Now most of this stuff was supplied by Akko, but just for your information, the cost of this entire build is $100 for the keyboard, $24 for the switches, and $40 for the keycaps. So that brings your total to $164 if you're buying from the Akko website. So this is the first configuration. The full set of gaskets, the polycarbonate plate, the lubed CS Jelly Black switches, the SAL profile keycaps, and I've left out the case foam, which is how the keyboard basically comes assembled. So let's see how it sounds in this configuration. have to admit to being really impressed with that and I hope it came across in the typing test. The gasket system has way more flex than I've ever experienced before with that polycarbonate plate and I kind of thought it was going to be a bit too much for me. But I have to admit I very much like the feel and the sound of this keyboard in this configuration. So let's rewind back to barebone so as we can disassemble the keyboard and put together the second configuration. Obviously we'll have to do a full disassembly again to change out the plates. So those 13 cap head screws just come out of the bottom case so as you can lift off the top frame. From here you can lift out the plate and PCB assembly once you disconnect the daughter board from the main PCB. This brings me on to my first gripe which is the fact that that wire is way too short. The wire connecting the daughter board to the main PCB doesn't allow you to lift out the PCB and plate assembly and flip it over and then lie it on the desk to then obviously disconnect the wire. You have to kind of crack it open and try and shake out the wire from above which isn't too bad when you're taking out the wire but plugging it in is a completely different scenario. Way too short, way too difficult. But once I did get it out I can obviously take out the three short stabilizers but the spacebar stabilizer is held in place because there's foam dampening underneath it. Then you obviously need to undo the full plate and PCB screws, which in this case aren't screws, they're actually kind of like a male and female screw um, to kind of sandwich the plate and PCB together. And then with the plate and PCB apart, we can obviously lift out that spacebar and then switch over to the aluminium plate. The process to put this back together is obviously exactly the same, only now we have the aluminium plate installed. So now we're on to the typing test for the second configuration, and obviously the only change I've made is the aluminium plate is in place now the polycarbonate plate is taken out everything else remains exactly the same so let's see how it sounds Now to my surprise that was much worse both in terms of typing feel and sound. Obviously the aluminium plate has much less flex as you would expect but I really thought I was going to prefer it to the polycarbonate one because the polycarbonate is kind of approaching being too flexible for me. But not only did the aluminium plate not sound and feel as good in terms of like the general tone and the general feel but also the plate mount stabilizers had much more play. The housings could move much more freely in the aluminium plate which caused some rattle on the stabilizers which wasn't there on the polycarbonate plate. So 
given the housings are moving in the aluminium plate and not the polycarbonate plate and there's rattle in the aluminium plate but not in the polycarbonate plate this must be the cause of the rattle so once again let's rewind back to bare bone for the final configuration this assembly is obviously exactly the same so let's just skip ahead while we have it apart this time we'll take a look at the individual components that make up the keyboard and have a look at basically the build quality and the standout item for me is the acrylic case i can't quite believe how solid this case is by comparison to like an abs case there's hardly any flex at all in the top frame which is obviously a much thinner piece of plastic than the case itself so the case itself is like rock it just there's hardly any play in it whatsoever and i really really like that i really really like solid components the rubber feet on the bottom of the case are nice and firm feeling but do give when you're typing just to add to the kind of gasket feel of this keyboard i really like the general design it's a really solid square looking keyboard which is really to my taste and while i really like this silver kind of subtle branding on the bottom of the case i could really live without that massive sticker the pcb seems to be nice quality and south facing which is always welcome the pour on plate foam and the silicone switch pad seem to be stuck down to the pcb but they don't seem to be stuck down so much so that you wouldn't be able to peel it off but keep it intact so that's not really a problem for me having a daughter board for the usb c port is always a nice touch makes it much easier disassembling keyboards because you haven't got to kind of fit that into the hole that's in the case but that is kind of offset by the wire being so short makes it really awkward especially when trying to plug the wire back in both the polycarbonate plate and the aluminium plate are nice quality and it's obviously where the gasket system comes together i don't really know the exact terminology for gasket systems but my odin v2 has got what they call a leaf spring system and if i was to install the silicone socks on this gasket system it would be exactly the same so i guess when you run the silicone socks it becomes kind of a leaf spring system but when you run the full length gaskets it's kind of like a standard gasket system if you like i didn't bother running the leaf spring setup because that would make the gasket feel even softer and it was already on the verge of being too soft for me with the full gaskets in there so i just left it as it was the stabilizers are kind of your stereotypical plate mount stabilizers the only different with these is they're kind of two-piece stems i'm not 100 percent sure on the reason for that but i assume it's something to do with controlling the tolerance between the wire and the inside of the stem they did come prelude but very very lightly again this pcb does support screwing stabilizers and i would say that they're a must-have if you're going to run the aluminium plate unless you want to do a tape mod on the plate mount stabilizers so let's move on to my final build I'm going back to that polycarbonate plate. I'm going to wholly mod the space bar and I'm going to do like a proper lube job on the space bar. By that, I mean Crytox 205 Grade Zero in the stem and the housing and then dielectric grease on the wires. I'm going to lube the short stabilizers using the same method as I do on the space bar, but I'm not going to wholly mod those. In this final build, I am going to run with the case foam, which was included in the box and the gasket system will remain the same as it came out of the box. So it's going to have a full set of full size gaskets on the polycarbonate plate. So let's get the keyboard back together in its final configuration. So now we're on to the final typing test and I'll just give you a rundown of this final configuration again. So we're back to the polycarbonate plate. We have the case foam installed. We're running a full set of full size gaskets. The space bar stabilizer is wholly modded and lubed and the rest of the stabilizers are lubed only. So let's see how it sounds. So I'm very happy with this configuration. I hope that came across in the final typing test. Again, I'm surprised by just how much better this keyboard is with that polycarbonate plate installed, which is which is good actually, because the pre-assembled version, if you opt for that one, comes with that polycarbonate plate and not the aluminium one. So let's finish off with my thoughts on the keyboard. I'm pleasantly surprised by just how much I like this keyboard and how much I enjoyed taking it apart, putting it together and changing the configurations. The most obvious comparison to draw against this keyboard is obviously the Keychron V series, which are also an excellent budget friendly custom keyboard that is available as a bare bone unit and i have to be honest in all the excitement of this build i kind of prefer the echo which is saying something because i really like the v series from keychron as with the keychron v series the diy kit is the way to go or the bare bones build if you like and 100 for the echo acr pro 75 in bare bones or the diy kit is a really good price for me even compared to the 70 which the keychron v series come in at 
You also have to consider stuff like the Akko has a gasket mount system, which the V-Series Keychrons don't. It has a hot swappable south-facing RGB that's compatible with screw-in stabilizers, which the Keychron V-Series also does have. But this also has that lovely solid acrylic case, which the V-Series just can't compete with for me with that ABS plastic case that they've got is nowhere near as nice as this solid acrylic one. Similar to the Keychron V-Series, you don't get wireless with this keyboard, but for me, it just doesn't matter. Everything about them is so good. You can tell that they've gone for quality over extras and I kind of like the fact that they skip the wireless hardware so as they can keep the cost down. The only gripes I have at all on the keyboard are ones that I've already mentioned, which is that the wire connecting the daughter board to the PCP is too short, the plate mount screws are too fiddly, and I don't like that massive sticker on the back of the keyboard. Other than that, I really like it, and the more I use it, the more I like it. At this point, I've been using it two days for work in place of the Odin V2, which I recently got. I don't think that this keyboard's better than the Odin V2 at all. That's not a fair comparison. That's a very high-end keyboard, but the point I'm making is that this keyboard has managed to distract me from my new sort of high-end flagship keyboard for much longer than I thought it would do. There's just something very nice about the Akko ACR75 Pro in terms of typing on it, and perhaps that's also specific to my build with those Akko CS Jelly Black switches and those SAL profile keycaps. It's kind of like a clacky typewriter feeling keyboard, which I really can't get enough of at the moment. When I say clacky typewriter, I mean in like a good way. The same goes for the Akko CS Jelly Black switches, a really nice set of cheap switches switches and I really like the SAL profile keycaps which are again they're only $40 you can't really go wrong a really nice set of keycaps all in all it's a really nice gasket mount keyboard that you can do a really nice budget build on I would have absolutely no problem recommending it to a friend so I have absolutely no problem recommending it to you person I don't know thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next one